My name is Claire Wilson and I am a Notice and Lean Specialist here at NCS. Today I'm going to discuss three things to be aware of if you are supplying rental equipment to a construction project. First, it's critical to know the statute specific requirements for rental equipment. Mechanics lien statutes are different in each state. For example, two states that have separate requirements for those providing rental equipment are Louisiana and Missouri. In Louisiana, the lessors of the equipment must obtain the lessee's signature on a notice at the time of entering the contract to be served upon the owner and prime contractor within 10 days from when the equipment is first placed on the project site. In Missouri, the lessor needs to serve the notice upon the owner within 15 business days from the first use of the rental equipment. The party who rents out the machinery or equipment to others should file the lien within 60 days after the last rental machinery or equipment was removed from the project. If you are the party renting the equipment, you should file the lien within six months of the debt becoming due. It is also important to note that the requirements may differ depending upon the type of project. In Illinois, for example, rental equipment is protected by the lien statute on commercial projects, but there is no protection for suppliers of rental equipment to residential projects. Next, it's vital to know your last furnishing date. Typically, the, only, the owner is only responsible for the work that was performed to improve their property. Therefore, the last furnishing date would be the last date the equipment was used on the job, not the date the equipment was picked up or serviced. Even if the service of the rental equipment is part of the contract, the date the service was received is not used to determine the last furnishing date. Finally, it's important to know that multiple liens may be required. If you supply multiple pieces of equipment to a property, there's a chance a separate lien will be required for each piece of equipment. Attorneys have conflicting opinions as to whether a separate contract for each piece of equipment requires separate liens or whether one lien would suffice, and it's quite possible that two attorneys in the same state would have differing opinions. Conservatively, the best practice would be to file separate liens. Even though each state may not specifically address rental equipment within the statute, it does not automatically mean you won't be entitled to secure mechanics lien rights. Therefore, it's best to serve a notice on every project. Make sure you follow statutory parameters, and when in doubt, seek a legal opinion. Let's quickly recap the key takeaways from this video. As a creditor, supplying rental equipment to a construction project, it's important to know the statute-specific requirements as they differ from one state to another, your last furnishing date, which is the last date your equipment was used on the job, and if you supply multiple pieces of equipment to a property, there's a chance a separate lien will be required for each piece of equipment. Are you wondering if you can secure mechanics lien rights on rental equipment or need help doing so? Contact NCS today with the information on your screen. Thank you for watching and have a great day.